check. Unit 1, 2, and 3 are gone. I checked, and they're gone. I mean, they're, they are gone. <laughs> they're like boom, boom, gone. And we're seeing the headlines coming out now where they're finally admitting that uh, the groundwater is running over the coriums and out into the ocean. And by the way, hi everybody. I see the chat room is gone mad in there. That's going to be a lot of fun to read after. And Unit 3 is Mox Fuel, and there's not enough focus on that. And can everybody hear me okay? I'll turn that up just in case. Turn it up a little notch. And I gotta watch the comments because whenever I play around with that comment, I'm not paying attention. But I got some really important stuff, uh, unfortunately. Uh, here we go. Rad Chick sent me, left a message there last night and I followed up on it. And it was from Texas, a veterinarian assistant in Texas. And they got massive uh, issues now with uh, pets. Uh, and I'm not going to try to read through the whole thing for you. Uh, but I've been working on a video all day, a 25-minute video. I'm gonna, I won't get it posted today, but it'll be... I got most of it finished now. I got all the audio done, all the pictures are imported, uh, screen captures. But April the 16th uh, was calling for a radioactive cloud stretching from, I'm sorry, was showing a radioactive cloud stretching from Texas to Canada. That was 2011 on April the 15th and it showed April 16th the next day they were expecting all the way from Texas and my dog is snoring right away. It wasn't snoring when I came on line. But I want you to hear a couple of these uh, headlines before I, I go to the next one. 40 million becquels, disintegrations per second, of the iodine-131 in a single bit of kelp off Southern California. That was March 30th, 2012. Now, what makes this unusual is iodine-131 has a half-life, uh, that's a long story, but has a half-life of eight days. And think about uh, it, then it uh, turns into another radioactive. So there's only half the iodine left. And it has a half-life of four days. But it created uh, iodine-132, was it? And so that would have a half-life of uh, two and a half days. And this goes back and forth. Uh, so it's about 40 days anyway. So this is March. Uh, one year later, one year and two weeks later, and it's still showing these high numbers off uh, Southern California. Now, uh, that's because it was hemorrhaging out of the blowholes where it melted cores or two. Uh, that right up until recently, until they got these Kevlar buildings on top of them. But that's really important because that has such a short half-life and there's 40 billion disintegrations a second every second going on every second uh, now that was just the iodine so you know uh, there's another headline from August the 12th 2011 is 166 million becquels per square meter of radioactive iodine and cesium at 21 million disintegrations a second 21 million when the average dose of a nuclear plant worker is around five a year becquels this was per square meter like the size of your um, dinner table um, outside of Fukushima four miles away so that's stuff that probably got carried by the tsunami and dropped and got buried by you know the wave and the, the coming back out and stuff like that this is very heavy metals and so that whole area is it's unbelievably just getting to Fukushima as a horror show now here's another one from August the 17, 2011, and this is California, may have inhaled 360 plus atoms of uh, radioactive sulfur, and there's a link below the video, um, and it's showing uh, buckyballs, 
what you're looking at right now actually on your screen is the buckyballs I'm talking about. And there's a peer review study of that below and with a little breakdown before the link. And why that's important, because those buckyballs you're looking at in the center of that is like the nucleoid uh, has a uranium atom in there or a uranium or I'm sorry, plutonium, say. And so that's a four and a half million year buckyball. Of extra, even though by itself it's still got a four and a half million year life, but by getting inside of those buckyballs because there's sulfur. And hang on a second, because I got another headline here. It's shocking. It's absolutely shocking. Um, 1,501 atoms of radioactive sulfur per meter, per cubic meter, was detected in the California air. In a cubic meter of air, 1,500 of these buckyballs. And that was August the 16th, 2011. So, what we've been talking about in the last few days is people in Seattle and Canada here have been breathing, that was the headline, uh, 10 buckyballs a day. 10, ra uh, 10 hot particles, that's what that hot particle is. It's a buckyball. Because normally the hot particles, they can't get too far, see? Uh, and this is why we're seeing these extraordinary rates so far away is because of that peer-reviewed academic study under the video about the buckyballs. That's a simple way of putting it for us normal people would say it, uh, call it a buckyball. And in the center of it is the engine. And so that, uh, that shape, that symmetrics is a good candidate. So it's like uh, the dust in your uh, house after you clean your house really well. You, and you've got sunlight coming through a window. You'll still see that fine dust floating around. It'll drive you crazy, right? The particulates. Uh, and so that's, uh, it just sits there and suspend it, kind of like a diver does. And what that means is, though, it's very easy to ingest, obviously. And these are, um, these are one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter that we're talking about. Uh, so if a millionth of a meter boggles your mind, imagine one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter. And that 1,500 and one atoms of radioactive sulfur per meter. This was the sulfur created by spraying the water on Unit 3 and because that was full of plutonium and had some uranium. But it was it was all these enriched weapons from the military industrial complex because you don't need all of these isotopes to make power. There's no need of these isotopes. It's totally, there's no, there was no need of those isotopes. This is the shadow government, the military industrial complexes playing with something they, they have no qualifications to play with. Uh, like I covered last night in my video, there's no way to get, they put the waste in 45 gallon drums and throw it in the ocean and tell you they got it in the sarcophagus till the end of time. And so then five or 10 years later, that 45 gallon drum has rusted open. And that, that has been, they've been doing that relentlessly on this planet. It's relentless. And other ways to get rid of, of course, is 5.5 million bullets a month in Iraq. Half of those came from McAllister's bomb manufacturer, which only makes uh, depleted uranium. It used to be called Dolram, depleted uranium low-level uh, Dolram radioactive material. Depleted uranium, Dolram. And so they got rid of the, the, the last part of the acronym, just called it DU. There's nothing depleted about it because it's uranium-238 and its half-life is 4.5 billion years. 4.5 billion years is a uh, half-life. <laughs> so come back to me in a couple of billion years and tell me about it. Uh, the fact that it's so toxic, it's so deadly in every way possible and it's putting out so much energy and that has filled up our oceans with the 234 and the 235 uranium alone. That's the weaponized... Uh, side of it. So the gammas, the betas, and the alphas are completely different, much more powerful, much more toxic. And so Unit 3, which was a total destruction, not counting the fuel pools that was above it. Now the fuel pools that were above it, it was 1,535 uh, racks, or 1,535 containers of 80 rods in a container, and each rod is made up of a concoction, they're telling us, of plutonium, and uh, uranium, but uh, 
because 4200 peer review academic studies are published every day and they're locked away a lot of this stuff I could just can't come out and say go here and go there because I don't have fifteen thousand dollars to go find it and you don't have fifteen thousand dollars to go read it and that's another part of the equation is that 4200 peer review academic studies are locked away every day that you paid for your children produce you paid for the professors the colleges the equipment the heating the lights you paid for the the printer you paid for the academically peer review studies the peer review of them at other institutions which are tax monies and that's locked away at Elsevier Springer and Wiley gets all the great ones all the best ones they get all the copyright even though you paid for it even though this is meant and they lock it up under state secrets and stuff like that but it's also it's been a good old boys club for since the beginning of time and those 1501 atoms in California in August the 16th 2011 this was a state secret right they turned that into a state secret and that's why your local state and federal uh, governments couldn't tell you anything about it because all of this was classified now to not tell you on purpose your government who swore they're gonna protect you who got the TSA groping everybody in every other country on top of that now in order to protect you um, they let you walk your children to school that day and those that week and that month in that stuff all day every day everywhere you went you know you can't escape it it's in and out of your house and the average person uh, was breathing 400 a day of these buckyballs these are hot particles so everybody's everybody in North America got cancer it's gonna show up in the next couple of years at the latest and that's why uh, the ocean is so terrifying is because it's full of this stuff and this is so much energy it's so intense it's so intense that a glass of these buckyballs could kill all the politicians on the planet and all the PR firms <laughs> forget about hanging them We'll get back to that one later. I think we should uh, refine all of our waterboarding techniques on PR firm employees before we go after the, the nuclear top dogs and do it to them too. Uh, you know, because that's, that's ultimately where we're headed for, because they're not going to tell us. They let us walk around in these buckyballs. They killed and murdered our children, even though just because they didn't die today or tomorrow, that don't mean they didn't murder them, okay? Let's get that straight. That's murder, what they done. By, declass by classifying it a state secret, then we got to find out who classified it as a state secret. Who made that decision? Who was involved in it? Who was down the chain? Who uh, stood up and argued for it and probably lost their jobs? Who went along with it? Who are the PR firms they hired? Their IP addresses are out there in all the videos. right? This is something that as a collective we're going to be coming after for sure. Because you can't let all the people in our country fill up with cancer and by making it a state secret and think you're going to get away with it and think that, oh, you know, ha, 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 I killed a couple of hundred million people. It takes a few years. Because this stuff is getting more intense every day. It's nonstop hemorrhaging. It's nonstop. And what everybody has to go by is what they tell us. Whereas it's easy to comprehend really truly what was going on the whole time when you, you know, two and two makes four, and some people will tell you two and two makes 22. And that's how I look at it. Two and two does make 22. Because once you got a little bit, you can get the rest of it. You can extrapolate it through uh, research and through vetting. And you come up, so you're postulating. That's what I do all the time is I postulate it, and then I have to debunk myself, and then I share the stuff that I can't debunk with you folks. And it's a relentless ordeal now. I don't know how long I've been doing this. <laughs> I've been doing this for a lot. I missed a few days, but I've been pretty good. Uh, the vultures are out, you know. And so let me give you some more stuff now that I terrorized you. And Texas got hammered a number of times. Think about Japan when it sent over those fire balloons. Uh, in 1944 and looked them up in Wikipedia fire balloons well they came across in the jet streams at 100 miles an hour say so every 24 hours it was 2400 miles and so three days later they were well over British Columbia and uh, within uh, four days they would have uh, been hammering the daylights out of California 
And so they were found all through that. When you look at that uh, fire balloons on Wikipedia, you'll see a whole list of places in the States and Mexico and Canada where those bombs landed. Uh, and Texas got hammered, apparently. Uh, was, you know, because Tex and Texas has these, for some reason, I don't know why, I guess it's where the heat is there, so it kind of pushes up against the heat and a lot of it will fall down where there's that temperature inversion. And you see that in um, the prairie regions, too, how the jet stream moves everything across the prairies and then it comes back into its normal loop again but the hot air kind of pushes the jet stream it's that kind of a anyway i wanted to run down a few more cancer uh, cloves uh, and i just want to blurt all this out not really fast but let me take my time and, and throw some of this out there because i'm creating i'm creating a video with all of this but i want to get some of it out as quick as i can of course uh, clove spice, really good stuff, um, omega-3 fatty acids, uh, fiber, it's got the vitamins and minerals, it's got the C and K calcium, and it's got magnesium, which you need, right? You absolutely need it. All your GMO food, that was a little odd, all your GMO food ha has the magnesium and the phosphorus, it has the um, iron, the cobalt, the calcium, engineered out and, and toxins engineered in and so it stops you from uptaking nutrients so you got to get rid of it's no good taking this stuff if you're still eating gmo because the gmo won't let you uptake the nutrients um that's proven now that's a peer review academic study like everything else i talk about if that makes people feel better but you can raise uh, raise your ph levels and shrink cancer tumors and you look up that uh, for baking soda because a lot of cancer is like fungus, and so you can you can, uh, but you have to look it up yourself. So or I'll finish the video. <laughs> It'll probably be better. Uh, black seeds. Black seeds is a remedy for everything but death. Black seeds, and you can consume them so many different ways. And for five or ten dollars, you got yourself a nice uh, collection of the black seeds. Fifteen or twenty dollars, and you know, and you use these a couple of these each day, right? Like. Um, let me see. Turmeric uh, has 600 potential health benefits. It uh, destroys multi-drug resistant cancers. 600 peer review, there's, um, I think it's actually 1,500 peer review studies. I always say six or 700, I can't remember. I kind of go back and forth just to try to get people to go look at and make so they can understand how many properties turmeric actually has. It's an incredible, un it's unbelievable how good that stuff is. And it destroys multi-drug resistant cancers. It destroys the cancer stem cells, right? Um, it protects against uh, radiation, uh, um, the damage from radiation. And turmeric, uh, it gets rid of the inflammation. Uh, let me see here. It's really good against protecting against heavy metal, which is what these particulates are, right? The uranium, strontium, plutonium, uh, the cesiums are all heavy metals and all their byproducts and all their um, radioactive uh, inbreeding cousins. And uh, there was another study, uh, turmeric was showed to reverse um, quite a bit, not all the way, but quite a bit of Alzheimer's and dementias because it's restoring it's kind of like uh, structured water and i gotta i'll be including that too but structured water is totally different from the water you normally drink structured water is the stuff that traveled through space and it's been here since the beginning of times and you'll find it in mountain springs and and uh, but everything's going to be radiated anyway so if you're going to if you're going to have everything radiated um you don't want to you don't want to eat gmo because that makes you vulnerable and makes you susceptible and it's so hard not to eat the GMO because everything uh, by craft is GMO. And that's uh, so sucks in everybody. And then the commercials are always out there with craft. And so it's always enforcing it. And every time you go to the supermarket, most of the shelves are craft. And craft was owned by Philip Morris, right? He used to put 4,000 chemicals in cigarettes. And then they, they uh, fund studies on how nicotine gives you cancer. So, because that way nobody's asking why is there 4,000 chemicals in, in the cigarettes. 
Uh, and so that's a really sick and twisted thing they done. Uh, but all tobacco manufacturers had done that. It was like um, there, there was this conspiracy to put filters on cigarettes, and one tobacco uh, wouldn't do it. And he went, finally went out of business about a decade ago. But the rest of them done it. But a filter makes the particulates and those 4,000 chemicals smaller. And so they get through the liners of your lung, the membrane of your brain. And uh, then you build up your white immune uh, blood cells will come in and attack that. Uh, so turmeric is a wonder one. So just an absolute wonder. That's one of the things you never want to run out of, ever. And you want to try to eat a little bit of it every day. And there's many ways to eat it. There's just, I know people that puts it in a glass of water and just slugs it back into them. Loves it. Absolutely loves it. Don't care. They want that health. They want that, that uh, it's like dandelion, you know. It's got every mineral and every nutrient the body ever wanted. How can you not enjoy something like that? And it's cheap to do. I mean, like uh, Mark was saying, he wouldn't eat it in Detroit because you just don't eat stuff out of the ground in Detroit. <laughs> but I, I get that. But you can get dandelion extract. And if you're going to buy DCA, and there's a link below to DCA, it reduces all tumors by, I'm laugh, still laughing at Mark, because that's pretty funny, the way he done it anyway. But uh, the DCA, and there's a link below to that, that's been proven to reduce all tumors by 70%. So who cares about the rest of it? As long as you get your hands on the DCA, remember, you go to the health store, don't buy it anywhere else because you can get poison DCA too. But the stuff at the health stores uh, and your pharmacist can, uh, pharmacist can order in for you. If you ask them, you say, can you order it in for me? And if they say no, you say, well, why not? <laughs> Otherwise, you got to go to Amazon and pay it through the nose. But still better not having it, right? DCA reduces all tumors by 70% in the first three weeks. That's incredible. And so what I'm trying to teach you here is about preventive medicine. So let's keep going on some of that. Uh, 600 reasons, once again, uh, why turmeric may be the world's most important herb. Look up that article, and that'll link you all over the place to peer review studies. And it'll link you over to the major sites with the peer review studies, a list of the peer review studies on turmeric. And you're going to see just 600 peer review studies right there. I think there's like 1,500 altogether, though. Broccoli uh, kills stems, um, the stem cells that makes cancer. So think about that one. Broccoli. And cabbage is another one. Cabbage is really good at that. Um, but then again, like you say, you know, you got all the cesium, all the plutonium, all the uranium. We're not telling you about coming over and landing into your ground. And you can't escape it. And then you're ingesting... If you've been alive in the last couple of years, and you're, that means you're old enough, to, you know, you, if you're old enough to be watching this video, that means you were ingesting. If you're anywhere in North America, British Columbia, um, you were ingesting 10 to 400 uh, radio atoms and hot particles, up to 10 hot particles a day minimum, I should say. It's probably 500 a day. And uh, they sequester in your lungs and in your organs, uh, depending on uh, what they got for a nucleoid, because um, it could be the buckyballs that you're looking at. I'm driving, trying to drive that point home to today, and how the ocean is full of that stuff, and how much energy, because think about, uh, uh, you know, like the betas and the gammas, and the alphas are traveling at a couple of hundred or 300,000 speed of light, right? They're traveling out of there at the speed of light. Now think about a molecule from boiling water or raising the temperature of water by a couple of degrees. So those molecules are not going at the speed of light, okay? But the energy that's coming out of those isotopes and all these particulates that are splitting uh, the atoms and releasing the isotopes at a relentless pace for a couple of billion years, and there's so much of it. I mean, they got three reactors down there that have spewed out just inconceivable amounts, but gra uh, let me go back on track here. Grape seed extract is really good against cancer cells. Grape seed extract, and you can buy uh, grape, seed, grape seed oil, for instance, and the health food shops, you can order in some really, really clean, uh, well-sourced stuff. But you gotta do your, you know, there are health food shops out there will sell you GMO supplements. You gotta watch out for that. You gotta watch out for 
Most of the baby food out there is GMO. Most of the supplements are GMO. Pharmaceuticals and your pet foods are mostly GMO. You really truly, and you might get this natural product, but it's contaminated with GMO. And so it's harder to take up the nutrients, even when there's a little bit in your system. But if you have, say, 10% of your meal is GMO, you can't uptake the nutrients because that's what the GMO does. It stops you from uh, being able to uptake nutrients, just like it stopped the plant from being able to uptake uh, nutrients. That's engineered into the plant itself. It's inconceivable that all your corner shops and all your supermarkets are de uh, destroying your ability to uptake nutrients. And so uh, look at it this way, that a genetically modified corn, you have to eat 427, was it? GMO corn to get the same amount of calcium as you get out of the single organic corn on the cob because there's no nutrients in the GMO whatsoever. It's like eating cardboard dipped in formaldehyde and glossophates. That's, that's all. It looks pretty. If you go into a supermarket and it looks so pretty, you should take a picture of it or you can paint a picture of it. That's GMO. Organic food looks like I got to take that and chop pieces out of it. That looks horrible. That's, G that's organic food. And um, grapeseed extract. Um, yeah, and once again, you know, turmeric does uh, protect you against radiation. And you need that. You're breathing in these buckyballs, uh, one tenth or one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter. These little, they're like dust in your home you see floating around in the sunlight on a sunny day. And that's how they react. And so they can come across right in the air. They don't need to get all the way up into the jet streams to get here. They just picked up in the normal winds, get shoved up in the air, and they'll just float right across in the rain and snow will liberate them back down into your communities. Um, and uh, miso is a soup, M-I-S-O. It protects against radiation, cancers, and other things. It actually has a whole lot of great uses, really, really, uh, but it's really good. And uh, once again, you know, it goes back to the, to the fact that, like I said earlier in the video, and a mistletoe extract, beats chemo chemotherapy against colon cancer cells. Mistletoe extract. Now, I never went down the road very far on that one. That one just showed up yesterday, I think it was. Uh, yeah, December 25th, 2013. And um, I haven't followed it up on, on looking at the studies, so I can't verify that one. But I think it's, I, it's, I think it's accurate myself. Mistletoe extract beats chemotherapy against colon cancer cells. You can look it up. Uh, I always like, before I go at it, I always like to go look at the peer review studies and and then uh, copy and paste uh, their names and put the word blog or, you know, Twitter or something like that alongside of and see if I can hunt them down and see what they're saying now. And it's just a habit I got. I do it on a screen when I'm not even paying attention. I just keep going. I'll take out a Wikipedia page. I'll go read everything on it, see what their parents are, blah, blah, blah. It's just, I, I don't know. I just, um, I'm not necessarily, you know how it used to be in the old days when everything was innocent and it used to be so cool to come up on the internet and just click link the link the link the link the link the link the link and just get lost and just explore. Uh, I used to really enjoy that was an innocent time. Um, but now just, I do that now uh, on subjects where I just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And then I get, I have so many windows open now I've got to come back and read everything because uh, I just can't fill up any more windows. And so, I'll, you know, I'll read myself to sleep every night on subjects literally like that. Uh, and no matter what, I'll have that on the go anyway. That's a good way of sourcing things out. And I'm doing one of those videos today that I haven't got out. But a new study finds that raw garlic uh, was really good for lung cancer. Not a new study, actually. That's an older study. But that uh, garlic, raw garlic... Not that much, a couple of raw garlics a couple of times a week, you know, raw pieces. You can mash it up and, and uh, the fact that we got all these radioactive particles in the environment and that the ocean tore apart the Philippines, um, you got to think about this kind of stuff and getting out of the way of the jet stream 
and getting out of the way of the Pacific, right? Remember, there were 7,000 islands in the Philippines and that there's no infrastructure there whatsoever, that 44 provinces were, uh, there's not a tree left standing. There's not a telephone pole left standing. There's not a, um, you know, just, it's, the only water there is stuff that people are bringing in that's safe to drink. Everything is polluted. There's no toilets. There's no infrastructure. Uh, and these people are, if there's another one of these 200 mile an hour winds sustained for four hours, imagine the F4 tornadoes, a large one, an extraordinary big one would be a quarter mile and travel six miles and last 30 seconds or a minute. Imagine if it's 100 miles wide and it lasts for four hours before it gets past you. Well, that's the new storms. That's an F4 tornado that tore apart the Philippines, right? That's real. That's because the alphas and the betas and the gammas that are picked up in these typhoons. Remember, two typhoons converged upon Japan, right across Japan, picked up all these radioactive isotopes, uranium, strontium, plutonium. And I showed you peer review studies I'm going to be about how uh, the typhoons are spreading the radioactive water. But that increases the power of the typhoons and all other storms, hurricanes and... Uh, the ocean is so full, the fog is radiated, uh, right? Because you're liberating it uh, with the moisture from the ocean. And when it gets into these storms, that's very powerful, where there's 7,000 islands are devastated. Seven th 44 provinces. Uh, F4 tornado traveling for 300 miles, 100 miles wide, and sustained winds for four hours of 200 miles an hour, gusting to 235 miles an hour. So the wind becomes uh, projectiles. So say you had a little spot to hide there. If you stuck your arm out, you would fill it up with projectiles before you can pull it back if you still had it. Because the wind became projectiles. That's why there's no structure left in the Philippines. That's why you don't see it in the media, because they don't want you to think about storms like that. But they've been projecting that for the last two years in Hollywood movies, in models. And so people are paying for poorly scripted movies, but for the graphics so they can look at it and see what the future holds, the near future holds. And that's why there's so many of these uh, big storm movies in the last two years, because they're all modeled off the Fukushima's release into the Pacific Ocean. Because it's running over the hot coriums, the hot cores. Now, normally the hot cores took a million gallons a minute, and there's 1,440 minutes in a day, every day. And so this has been going on, um, getting close to three years, unhinged releases into the ocean over the hot coriums. So the water is um, unimaginably contaminated. It's unimaginably contaminated. If you were to drink a, an actual glass of that water coming out, you could not, uh, you wouldn't li live long enough to lay the glass down. I don't know if you would actually live long enough to get it up to your mouth when you picked it up. It's that radiated, it's that toxic. If you had a piece of one of the rods, so there's 122,000 rods in each pond. I forgot to finish that part for you. Because there's 80 rods in each bundle and there's 1,535 bundles. And so if you had a piece, say the size it is, I couldn't, and the house, this building was full of people. We'd all die almost at the same time, in a matter of a second or two or three, if we're lucky, if we're unlucky, because you'd be in agony, because your organs would all melt, um, which is what happened in Nagasaki and Hiroshima, where the women excreted uh, their uteruses uh, because it became liquid and then died, fell over and died as that happened. So imagine the horror, and they didn't need to do that. They didn't need to do that, see? They didn't need to drop the bomb. It was mostly women and children there on top of that. Um, and they, they picked them out as being strong and healthy, but also nutritionally deficient. That was also singled out in that study. I thought that was rather interesting. That they considered the Japanese at the Hiroshima to be nutritionally deficient, which is parallel to what we see happening now um, because, you know, when you think of a low-level background radiation, think of Fallujah and think how 80% of the babies are born with no arms, no mouth, 
no eyes, no nose, uh, totally dependent upon their loved ones to take care of until the end of time. But they also get the cancers because they live in all that uh, radiation, that background radiation, which is all dirty bombs, right? Because all the bullets that they're firing at like the Atain Warthog is 70 uh, ton and a half a minute of uh, depleted uranium. It's not coated, it's not tipped. It's solid to uh, 38, uranium 238. And so each one of those are dirty bombs. And if you had a little speck, you're supposed to dig up 900 foot topsoil right around it, six inches deep, and put up a fence and markers, universal markers, so nobody else accidentally uh, goes close to that hot particles. And uranium-238 is different again than normal uranium because it was um, weaponized, and which was another story I never finished. I was trying to finish earlier there. I was talking about the pools on top of unit one, two, and three, reactor one, two, and three, folks. Because that went through the reactor and now is up in the storage ponds for 30 or 40 years trying to cool down because it's so hot, well, that stuff has all disappeared and atomized and all the zirconian uh, coatings have burnt off it, which is, um, I can cover some of that in a bit, and I'll come back to the cancer stuff here too in a second. But uh, that stuff is a million times more dangerous than the rods before they put them in the reactors. Once you put them in the reactor and you took them out, they're a million times worse now. And so 122,000 rods in each one of the pools, and there's five or six pools missing on top of that, uh, with 122,000 rods roughly in each of those pools. And Unit 3 itself was the MOX fuel, and that was a toll right to the ground, and it went down and sat on the bedrock um, that it was built up on. So there was 100 foot of topsoil put on that site and then they put Fukushima's structure on top of that. And the topsoil was meant to sink down the cores if they got loose of their containment, but at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit, of course, nothing can contain that. So it needs all that water running over it or the whole site becomes a sinkhole because it will eat up all the rocks at a couple of thousand degrees. Imagine what it's gonna to do to that site. It'll just eat up the site, it'll unhinge. So all of these sites have that as a, a oh shit plan, is for the ocean to come in, or preferably I should say, the river to flood it and push it out into an ocean. That's why they're always built on slopes. That's why they're always, uh, they'll come in with the elevation and build it up first. And so they, they needed a million gallons a minute. And so we assumed there's still at least that a minute running over the melted cores. And that's 4.3 billion gallons a day. And that's a lot flooding into the ocean, and that's going to create superstorms that are going to be much bigger, much more badder than the Philippines. So we have to come up with technology to deal with this. We can't just uh, close our eyes and wait for it to happen, right? Uh, we're not, that's not the way society is supposed to go. The ocean is going to war against this planet. It's going to create supercell storms, but it's also going to hemorrhage in all the other oceans. It's also going to be picked up every day by uh, hundreds of thousands of square miles of clouds radiated clouds, and right now uh, there's credible evidence that they're building chemtrails disguised, like they've done in Vietnam for nine years with Agent Orange, but now they're chemtrailing disguised for quite a few decades to build buffers to stop the clouds from coming in, the radioactive clouds from making it into the coastline, because that never stops happening on uh, the ocean. It never stops making clouds and sending them in to continents. That never stops. And it's a hideous thing that's going on and that's well known that was turned into a national security issue and that's why nobody got told about it. But we can still speculate with all the headlines we got, right? And I know I missed out and I've been talking for forever and forever. Yeah, and dirty bombs, low-level background radiation, if you look at, uh, Stephen, if you look at uh, Fallujah, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, uh, you can understand, particularly with Fallujah, with so much, 80% of the babies are deformed, and so women don't even want to have babies in Fallujah, and that'll be like that all through Iraq and Afghanistan in the next few years. But that's coming to North America. That's coming to Canada. Uh, and it's showing up here now, actually. And because we're talking about the, the buckyballs, and there's links below to the peer review studies, that those buckyballs, see, that's not like a uh, normal dose of cancer or radiation that gave you cancer or sievers because the buckyballs are inside of you. And so 
it's really you know it's given off these huge betas and depending on what it is could be could be giving you gammas and uh, at lightning speeds these things are pounding into your cells at lightning speeds from the inside and so the cancers grow quite fast and but it, it attacks your immune system because your whole immune system goes into overload immediately because of the ingestion of those balls and that's what I'm telling everybody all the time about the DCA to reduce the tumors and also about the dandelion and nutrition um, Hi, Wind. Uh, Spirit of Rod spoiled the reactor. Uh, Paul, let's say hi to a few people. Mickey, see who's here. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Nuda. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin does his thing. He's an artist. And um, that's just the way some people are. Newman. Hi, Mickey. Albert. Uh, Alex. Just passing through. Yeah, and he's doing the bone marrow transplant and radiation treatment. And uh, let me come back to that one. New study finds that raw garlic cut lung cancer risk in half. And uh, omega-3 fats help overcome uh, cancer, particularly drug-resistant cancers. Omega-3 fatty has been known to be really good for that. And promganades, promganades, I can't even pronounce it. P-O-M-E-G-R-A-N-A-T-E-S is considered an anti-cancer superstar. How cool is that? And you can buy all of that. And a lot of this they're not producing as GMO yet, so that's pretty cool. So there's a good collection. And blueberries do absorb uh, the cesium-137. And that's the whole point of what I keep saying is that, uh, you know, it's getting to the point where you can't get away from this radiation because it blanketed our entire coastline for a couple of years straight. And now the ocean's filling up. And so rainstorms and, and the salt water hitting the coastline. Uh, let me come back to that. Let me come back to that. Hang on. And you see down in Texas where pits are showing up at all these abnormalities that the people that work at these uh, veterinarian places, rather, uh, you know, they know these pits, they know these animals, and they're healthy, uh, you know, a few months later, all of a sudden, even puppies, and it's just so many of them, there's something going on there. And we know the radiation traveled right down there and runs in to that hot weather, and then the the condensation, plus they're chemtrailing heavy down there, and that's knocking it down. And so that's another one that a lot of people are going to have a hard time accepting, is that the chemtrails, every country on the planet, that's their backup plan, is to send up planes and spray aggregates that will uh, grab on to the radiation, because the radiation is a charge, it's an electrical charge, a very high energy electrical charge. Those in particular, it's meant to grab them and weigh them down just to try to get them out of the ear. Uh, because eventually, you know, uh, think about how the radiation works against the ocean where it kills all the oxygen properties of the ocean. Let me throw that up there. So once again, uh, let me drive that point home. You, can go, you used to be able to go anywhere in the ocean and take out a little sample and put it on a petri dish or a couple of pieces of glass, put it on a microscope, and you see millions and millions and millions of creatures. And say if you took a cup of that and you put an isotope in it, it will destroy, annihilate every creature there in a matter of a short period of time, just a few minutes. It would annihilate everything in that cup. And you can take that same isotope and put it in a uh, big container of hundreds of... Uh, I can't remember the word, but 10 to the power of 29 animals, and it would destroy them in no time at all. And that uh, isotope will do that for billions of years. It's relentless. And at least, and that's the, those creatures are the creatures that produce oxygen. And so another part of that is now when it comes to the ocean coming in and crashing onto your coastlines, and then just the ocean waves themselves and clouds and everything else, it's not picking up the oxygen molecule because they got destroyed. 
the protoplankton's the ability of the ocean to make oxygen, which is 50% of the oxygen on the planet is coming from the oceans, and the Pacific is the, one of the biggest ones on the planet. Well, it is the biggest one on the planet. And I spent 14 years diving in the ocean, six hours a day on the ocean floor, and the, the micro life is so important. The ocean truly is a soup of life. Yeah, for a couple of months a year in particular, it's an amazing soup of life where you can't look anywhere every day for six hours. It's this soup of life. It's literally hundreds of millions of creatures in your face all day long, babies floating by. You can't even close your eyes at night to escape it. Nice 200 day trips back to back on the ocean. And so the radiation, I understand, well, I've been studying it for so long, uh, eight years, and uh, that's what worries me so much is that it destroys the ability of the ocean to produce oxygen because it's, re it's unrelenting right, of, of uh, energy at light speeds, at 300,000 kilometers an hour, the betas and the gammas and the alpha particles are popping off this energy for millions and billions of years. And so that's, that nothing can sustain that kind of beating, okay, nothing. Um, so 1,501 atoms of radioactive sulfur per cubic meter in the air in California on August the 16th, 2001. And then like the other headline I was talking about earlier where there was a radioactive storm all the way from Texas through Canada, right down to Mexico. And we have the peer review studies I've went over many times on this. There's links below to that studies where the Canadians went out on the coastline and flew through uh, radioactive plumes that were from the ocean all the way up to the jet streams and that the estimates showed they lasted for months and so that's the 1501 atoms of radioactive sulfur per meter the buckyball is the link in the peer review study below that I'm talking about and that was detected in the California air and so the truth is coming out now and that's because of all the water that was running over the corium so that these particular isotopes hot particles that are being flushed out there's so much energy and so powerful and so much stuff was lugged away during the tsunami that didn't updated that whole prefecture uranium-234 which is the weaponized um, uranium after the processing was detected in Southern California Hawaii and Seattle and so that would have been inside of the buckyballs again uh, to 234, right? Because that's what they had in the reactors was uranium-234, 235. And plutonium. And these concoctions that we don't 100% understand because everything is locked away. Everything is a peer review academic, locked away till the end of time, or it's national security, like the national security of not telling us about all the buckyballs. Uh, the fact that ten people were ingesting, for sure, you know, I've heard many times now... Um, 10 buckyballs a day at least, hot particles, hot particles. It only takes one to do the number on you in a couple of years. So what's 10 a day going to do to you? And you can't flush that out. But you can kind of deal with it, uh, you know, because that's what you're left with. You have to deal with it. So all the stuff I was talking about earlier, which is not everything, but uh, about uh, natural foods and how they they fight cancer and how peer review studies show, right? Because there's no money in cures, there's, right? There's no money in cures. There's a lot of money in treatments. And there's no money in treatments that cures. So there's a lot of money in treatments that only treat, that don't really treat, that you always have other issues because that's what the treatment does. It creates these other issues. And guess what? The same people who treat that issue got a treatment for that issue because they understand it and is engineered into it now. It's the good old boys' school, and there's no culpabilities. In fact, uh, they're corporations, so nobody can go to jail. All he can do is get a fine, but nobody actually gets a fine. The corporation gets a fine, and it doesn't mind because that's part of doing business. If you sell $11 billion, like Paxil done, $11 billion of a flawed product, and you get caught, and you get a billion-dollar fine, well, you made $10 billion profit. Pretty darn good. Who cares if a million people lives were destroyed? You made $10 billion profit for your greedy, disgusting, uh, demented shareholders. Uh, it's really, truly evil. 
and 40 million becquels of iodine 131 in a single bed of kelp which I worked in all my life kelp beds on uh, coastlines off southern California is staggering that says it all it's just so much just so much for so long and so the PR firms are out there trying to murder everybody I got the headline there where they paid them 12 million dollars to the PR firms when they were burning the trash in uh, Tokyo and Japan. So they paid PR firms $12 million to get out there on Twitter and do battle against people complaining about it. But now since the October 25th earthquake, 7.5 earthquake, they just shut the internet off and implemented martial law and then retroactively covered that with a law there a couple of weeks ago when Abe came up with that secrecy law. That was about retroactively covering the martial law that they implemented about a month before that. You're dealing with some really sick creatures, but they can't hide much longer. Particularly, they've done that because of the, the Philippines, right? They didn't want it coming out because people were starting to, to speak out. But, but when you think about uh, how dangerous it is down there, four kilometers, it's 166 million becquels of iodine. That's madness per uh, square meter. And 21 million becquels per square meter of cesium. What about the uranium? What about the plutonium? What about the uraniums, 234s, 235s? How much of 238 was down there that got washed away when it flooded? That stuff's got a half-life of 4.5 billion years too. And I'll come over to the comment section. We'll wind her down. And I'll be coming in right after night, a cup of tea and read through everything. The facts and all you get what? Ozcam Mike. Well, you know, because the media is re just lying and lying and lying and lying to everybody. That's why I do these shows each night is the people that are coming through and they don't know any better and they're trying to learn. And so you really have to drive. You get that one opportunity to uh, educate people and uh, hopefully it does something good for them. And then, you know, I got... Um, a lot of people that want to come here and do the chat rooms, which is really cool because I like reading that after. And I got to know a lot of these people now, of course. And then there's a lot of people that have been out there a lot longer than I have pushing back, and they find this as an opportunity to just um, realize that they're not alone out there and that what they, you know, the way they feel is the same as we feel. We all feel the same way. That's where I get my energy from is the real communities out there that are putting their heart and soul into it, trying to, you know, trying to make a little bit of a difference because uh, they shouldn't have to because the media has failed us so much and because the PR firms have done so much damage, so much destruction and created so many murders. The PR firms are the biggest uh, problem out there. They're murdering people at a phenomenal rate. And so hanging them is too quick. We've got to bring back the old burn them at the stake routine because uh, that's what they deserve. They don't deserve anything less. Uh, they don't deserve to sit in a jail cell and rot. We, I want to hear them screaming. Hi, Radchick. Radchick's here. Uh, you find links to Christina Consolo below, folks. Uh, she's got a, done a regular a recent interview that'll just... And it's about uh, U.S. sailors. She's got a couple of sailors to talk to uh, that were on the U.S. Ronald Reagan. And it's a heartbreaking story and well worth, uh, the link is below, it's well worth watching. You'll find a link to Christina's site below too. And hi, Anna Beck and Mama Knox, hi. Hi, Mama Knox. Big smile. And yeah, you're welcome, Wanna be 24 Live. So we're winding down. Hi, Seed Man Luke. New man, uh, make his look in. Hi, Miss Milky. Can you hear me waving? <laughs> Ninja Dana. Wow. Yeah. I was in martial arts for years and years. There's a lot of tough people out there. Hi, Kevin John. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for coming by. You know, thank you for learning. And hi, Jester. I'm just getting ready to wind down, folks. Yeah, thank you, checks and balances. 
I miss you the last couple of times. I keep meaning to say hi. And Stephen, uh, once again, Anna Beck made it tonight. Hi, Annie. I call you Anna, but when I look at you, I say Anna. Annie. Oops, see, I slipped it that time. Hi, Rob. You're welcome, Rob. Thank you. Yeah, I work at it all day, every day, try to just source out what I can, share that. And today was a doozy for me, uh, last night too. And I've been working on a video all day. It's a different different take on this than normal for me, so that should be fun for you guys. I'm a bit of a dick in that video, so that'll be interesting. <coughs> uh, yeah, so let me see. I guess I'll have to come back in. Yeah, uh, Atika Rama. What a monster that guy or creature is. That's not. That's actually not a human, I don't think. I think that's a creature. That's a PR firm. And he's always talking about bananas, background radiation. Oh, it'll be like the background radiation of a banana. He's, oh, murderer, see what? Hi, Gavin. Yeah, Radchick is doing some really incredible stuff. She's got Nuke Radio. i got to remember to get that link below. That's terrible. She does uh, Nuke Radio. It's really good stuff, folks. And I'll correct that soon enough with that link there. Hi, Sylvia. You're welcome. Thank you. I seen you there. And I know you had a question for me, and I can't remember what it was now. Damn it. Hi, Dale. Candy. Hi. Yeah, you got a spot for New Zealand? Yeah, pretty cool. Sounds like a good spot. Uh, hi, Nuda. I'll just try to say hello to a few people as I wind it down, folks, is all I'm really doing. Unless I catch something, I'll, I'll comment on it. But Hi, Mark. Mark is there. Thank you, Mark. Elizabeth. Doug. Hi, Doug. Uh, Lisa Yando. Yandor? I can't. That's an interesting name. i got to learn to pronounce that one now. Thank you, Lisa. Hi, Kat. You're welcome, Kat. Thank you. Hi, Zipri. Hi, Judy. Sergeant. Here we go, folks. We're almost, we're almost uh, out of steam here. I'll just run down. I say hi, Miss Milky again. Hi, Miss Milky. Double wave. Hi, Dale. Yeah, we're going faster now. Uh, Wiry Cutman09. You're welcome. Thank you, Judy. And checks and balances again. I say twice tonight because... Uh, I missed your last couple nights. Hi, Jimmy Joe and Rob Reese. Uh, Sequel. Nuke Radio. Yeah, Nuke Radio. Sequel 12, you bet. And Radchick, we say goodnight to everybody. Mike, Curb, Mamanox again. We appreciate everything you do. Uh, Mark is blogging on Fukushima lately, so that's really cool and encouraging to see other people doing that. And... That's what we need. We need you to use your voices. And you're not going to knock them out of the ballpark right away, probably. And so just don't worry about it. Just pretend no one's ever going to watch your video. And make two, three, four-minute videos and put them up on your site. And just forget about them. Just forget about them. And then get good, learn about something else, and come out and share it with people. That's the, a good thing to do. And it's a bit nerve-wracking the first few times you do it. But you'll gain your confidence. And don't worry if you don't get anybody on your videos. Don't do it for that. Uh, because you'd be surprised. I'm probably going to see it. It's going to be hard for you to get out there and me not find it. Because there's nothing out there escapes my scrutiny. I'll find it. And I'll watch it. <laughs> That's just the way I am. Because I'm just afraid I'm going to miss something. It's weird. And it's uh, taken over my life now for a couple of months straight. And I wouldn't have it any other way. And I strive every day. I listen to all the lectures. Uh, if I can't find anything recent I'll just go back to my personal collection and I have uh, just an amazing amount but I'm, I'm so interested in the Fukushima uh, that I'm starting to really truly get it now for sure how bad this actually really is and so the urgency for me drives me here almost every night but it certainly drives me all day every day and hopefully it drives me here every night because that's the intention. We Somebody has to do that till I get drowned out by everybody else. And I'll, that'll be a good day for me. And that'll happen. I have no doubt. And like tomorrow night, I'll be back out.
and we'll be doing it again. Take care, folks. And I got to rewind the page because it won't kick me off. I had a hard time logging in here tonight, too, by the way. Still not signed out. No, that's hilarious. Here we go again. I'm probably gone this time. Take care, folks.